There are a lot of things that no one told me about being a mom. This one though, might surprise you. Before I talk about why toys make me cry, make sure to like this channel, subscribe, and make sure you hit that little bell icon so you can get notifications about all my videos. Also, make sure to check out groknation.com for articles on parenting and why other things about being a mom make me cry. Okay, let's get back to toys. No one ever told me that the toys that I budgeted for, saved for, chose so carefully would become a source of pain and tears. Not for my children, but for me. You see, at almost 10 and almost 13, my son's attention has shifted to something that I'm familiar with, but have no particular affinity for, and that is video games. They like the video games that your kids probably like. And while I raised them with no technology, no television, no movies for many years, while they still don't have phones, but they do have tablets, they enjoy playing all of the games that kids like to play, especially boys, I'm told especially boys. I don't relate, and that's a whole other story, but ultimately, the story that I'm telling right now is that we have an entire room of toys that my children no longer want to play with. Knights and horses, each precious, each perfectly crafted in a factory in Germany. Playmobil, two baskets of Playmobil. I wonder if my boys remember that before we ever took them to the dentist, we used the Playmobil dentist set to teach them what to expect. And then there was that basket of miscellaneous people and things. And sometimes we would just dump the whole basket out and we would make a little parade. And now it has happened. Jackie Paper has come no more. You see, a dragon lives forever, but not so little boys. Painted wings and giant rings make way for other toys. At 42, <laughs> I am welling up and my head is bent in sorrow and my tears, they fall like rain. Without his lifelong friend, Puff could not be brave. So Puff that mighty dragon sadly slipped into his cave. I have my boys lifelong and I don't know if they see me as their friend. <laughs> I am their mother and our bond is different than that of friends. I have to be brave even as I stare at buckets of toys and memories. But I don't feel very brave because no one told me that I would take all of their once beloved things and put them in a cave. I will donate them to, to children who have no toys. They will go to a good home. And I'll hold on to a few things as I tend to do. I'll make some sort of art project out of them, I'm sure. I will remember that these are first world problems. There are some children with no toys. I will remember that. But this is not about toys, really. It's about grasping for what was because of fear and uncertainty about what will be. We make way for other toys. We make space. On, on shelves and in closets. We make room for other realities, some of them virtual. We make room for whatever comes next, however we can. Slowly, surely, inevitably. A and ultimately, we're making room for learning new ways to understand, to engage, and to love. Thank you for watching. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and go to groknation.com to read other ways that I have struggled with all of these parenting transitions.